Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining with me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing our examination of the 37th Psalm. The 37th Psalm. David wrote this Psalm. And just really intriguing things within this psalm. We're taking it a section at a time, sometimes a verse at a time, because there's so many truths right here. So let me remind you of what we've looked at so far. In the first 10 verses, we've seen where the psalmist and the Lord have told us not to fret over evildoers, not to be envious toward evildoers, right? Why? Because, you know, they're going to be like the grass. They're going to wither away. They're going to fade away like the herb. He tells us to trust in the Lord. And in that trust in the Lord, he tells us to do good. He tells us to dwell in the land and to cultivate faithfulness. Again, well, that just needs to be so hammered in in our hearts. We are so tempted to be discontented with where we are and not do what the Lord's called us to do where we are, thinking, well, if I could only be on the other side of the fence, I could do what I think I'm supposed to do. He's saying, no, dwell where you are, cultivate faithfulness where you are. And then he told us to delight ourselves in the Lord. And if we do that, he'll give us the desires of our heart. That's because the desires of our heart will be aligned with the desires that God has. Okay? It's not a soulish thing. It's not a fleshly thing. It's not that we've taught God into what we want in our heart in the soulish realm and the fleshly realm. No, no, no. It's that our heart will be aligned with God's heart. And then we saw where he said to commit your way to the Lord, to trust in him, and he's going to do. He's going to do it. And he told us, well, do what? He's going to bring forth righteousness. He's going to bring forth uh, judgment as the noonday, your vindication, in other words. Then he told us to rest in the Lord, to wait patiently on the Lord. He reiterated, do not fret about those that are prospering in their way. Don't fret about the wicked and their schemes. He told us to cease from anger, to forsake wrath, to not fret. That's the third or fourth time he said, do not fret, do not fret. That fretting only leads to evil. But then in verse 9, we'll pick it up there. He says this, for evildoers will be cut off, but those who wait for the Lord will inherit the land. Okay, there's a theme that's being picked up here. The inheriting the land. Wait upon the Lord. Don't worry about those evildoers. They're going to be cut off. Verse 10. Yet a little while, and the wicked man will be no more. And you will look carefully for his place, and he will not be there. So he's telling us again. Don't worry about the wicked. They're going to be cut off. God's going to deal with them. But you do this. You wait for the Lord, and you will inherit the land. Verse 11. But the humble will inherit the land. There we go again. And will delight themselves in abundant prosperity. This is abundant prosperity from the Lord and of the Lord. It's not limited to the prosperity that we often think of in our minds, okay? An abundance of stuff, okay? But the Lord will prosper us in every way. Verse 12, the wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes at his teeth. Well, we know that, don't we? <laughs> you think, well, what do we do with that? You know, we're told not to fret about this, but what do we do when the wicked plots against us? Okay? What do we do when the wicked are gnashing their teeth against us? Remember what God says in the next verse. Psalm 37, 13, the Lord laughs at him for he sees his day is coming. <laughs> the wicked that are plotting against the righteous, the ones that are gnashing their teeth against the righteous. And boy, if you never see that in your life, just turn on some news sometime. You'll see it. Okay, You'll see the wicked gnashing their teeth. The Lord laughs at them. Why? Because he knows what is coming in the day of judgment. He knows what their ultimate outcome is going to be. Verse 14. The wicked have drawn the sword and bent their bow to cast down the afflicted and the needy, to slay those who are upright in conduct. So the psalmist here, David is acknowledging it. David had gone through this stuff, was going through this stuff at this time. People were coming against him. And he's saying this is what the wicked will do. They're going to pull, get their sword out. They're going to pull that bow back. They're going to try to bring down the, the righteous, okay? Verse 15, their sword will enter their own heart and their bows 
will be broken. As a matter of fact, if you keep up at any level with uh, national news in the political realm and that kind of thing, you see this happening day in and day out. As a matter of fact, a lot of things that are occurring, uh, a, a lot of times people say, well, why doesn't so-and-so do this and do this? If they would just reveal this information, then everything would be taken care of and everybody would know. Well, that's true. But a lot of times that information is just being withheld. The truth is just being held back a little bit so as the wicked will do exactly this. They'll come back. They'll bring out their sword. They'll say this and they'll say that. Little do they know that they're literally shoving the sword into their own heart and that their bows, which they think are great strength, and they're about to let go with the arrows, that those bows are being broken. So verse 16 Better is the little of the righteous than the abundance of many wicked. So remember the, the beginning of the psalm here. David was going, you know, why, you know, I know it's hard, he said, but don't fret over these wicked things. When you see people, we think they're prospering. We think they're doing all this kind of stuff. They're going to be judged. Don't fret, don't fret, don't fret. Remember this. It's better if you have just a little bit and yet you're righteous than to have the abundance of the world and be wicked. Verse 17, for the arms of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord sustains the righteous. See, the wicked will be broken. We know that. They're going to be broken. Now, our problem is we want them broken now. Our problem is we want them dealt with now. Our problem, we want them out of their lives. Our problem is, honestly, we have a little bit of a schadenfreude situation here. We're desiring to see them punished and see them broken and see them put through the pain. And that should not be our attitude. Our, our attitude should be that they would be brought to righteousness. Who knows? Perhaps the Lord wants them to be saved. We simply don't know. So we need to be careful. We, we need to just leave it in the hands of the Lord. Realize that the wicked will be broken. We need to speak forth the truth. Perhaps the wicked will become believers. But know this, it's the Lord who sustains the righteous. Then verse 18, the Lord knows the days of the blameless and their inheritance will be forever. See, the Lord knows the number of days of the blameless in every way. He knows the number of days and the number of breaths that each one of us will breathe personally. He knows. He's known bef since before the foundation of the earth. He knows how long the days of the righteous will live upon the land. He knows everything. But he's letting us know this, that he knows the days of the blameless, because we can rest in that, and we can trust in that. And then this last little phrase, and their inheritance will be forever. The days of the inheritance of the righteous will be forever. Ever. The next verse says this, they will not be ashamed in the time of evil and in the days of famine, they will have abundance. This is more than hinting at the fact that God will take care of the righteous. Okay, he will take care of them. We have no reason to be ashamed to live in righteousness in a time of evil. Is it a time of evil? No doubt. Okay, no doubt we, we live in evil days, but that's that's been that way since Cain and Abel. We know that the days of the righteous and days of the blameless are known by God. We know that we have nothing to be ashamed of. We know that our inheritance will be forever. We know that in the now, at this time, whether they be day of, days of prosperity or days of famine, that the Lord will provide and we will have abundance. So here's the question. Do you know that? Do you know it? It's one thing to know it mentally. It's another thing to know it within your mind, soul, spirit, and body. Well, again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for your time. I will see you again next time. Goodbye.